Alright, uh, good morning everyone. So my name is Nathan Simonsides. I'm from Insertion Games Lab uh, from Monash University, Australia. And today I'm going to tell you about something called Neo Numina and how it augmented com uh, the communication of emotion. Uh, now, so what is Neo Numina? Well, to give some context, I'm currently uh, working on my PhD. Uh, it's titled um, Understanding the Design of Integrated Consciousness Through Implicit Neural Interfaces. So essentially everything that Pedro just talked about, I'm looking at how that interacts with consciousness and how you can like, think of integration uh, in terms of how uh, integration can be used to connect people's consciousnesses together or how we can share conscious experiences. Um, and so yeah, to do that I have devised like these three research questions and uh, which sort of seek to answer and seek to answer these three research questions through three different prototypes. So these being how do we design neural interfaces to act with subjective experiences of consciousness? How do we design neural interfaces to augment the communication of subjective experiences of consciousness? And how do we design neural interfaces to interpersonally integrate subjective experiences of consciousness? Now what Neo Numina is, is a prototype that I designed to answer this second uh, question. Uh, and so now rather than telling you what it is and how it works, I'm just going to show you with this video. People often find it difficult to communicate their emotions. We believe that interactive technology can help with this. We have designed a new system called Near Numina. Neo Numina uses brain computer interfacing and artificial intelligence to read one's emotions and presents them to others in mixed reality through head mounted displays. Both participants see fractals representative of their emotions overlaid over their physical environment. Through studying how people use Neo Numina in their homes, we found that its spatial temporal, representational, and social properties allow for participants to experience emotion as something that is changeable, as objectively informative, and as a beyond natural form of communication. We intend that our work gives guidance towards a technological future of empathy and unity. Okay, so the design of Neo Numina was first inspired by literature in neuroscience and psychology discussing the mechanisms of exchange of information between humans. Uh, uh, the main takeaway that we got from here is like, while well, language is our primary means of information exchange, it has a lot of trade-offs that place limitations on how much information can be conveyed, uh, while, while also being subject to misinterpretation. Uh, so, and meanwhile, there's also evidence that humans do have the cognitive bandwidth to take in additional information, we just don't use it. So uh, we, uh, we looked at to research in neuroscience, emotion mapping, and biomimicry to find ways to encode emotional information without language. Uh, so this led us to the use of fractals, color, movement, and proximity to encode uh, emotional information. Uh, we then took the principles underlying neurofeedback, namely that representation of brain activity can inform you about brain activity and allow you to change it, and modified it to make it interpersonal, hence the use of EEG. Uh, and then uh, this outward modification of neurofeedback was completed through the lens of human-computer integration, so drawing specifically from Steve Mann's uh, humanistic intelligence, uh, which, is, uh, which informed the adoption of AR to mediate the interpersonal communication of, of an, an emotional reality. Um, uh, so in practice this was achieved through taking brain activity through an EEG and then passing it through machine learning algorithms to come to a classification of that person's concurrent affective state. Uh, and then using that, uh, with these classifications, uh, we drove the generation of fractal swarms that uh, followed and uh, manifested themselves around that person for themselves and others to see. Um, so to help us understand the resultant experiences of using Neo Numina, we conducted an in-the-wild study um, in which the system was deployed to five pairs of participants. Uh, and during this time, participants used Neo Numina at will for three days within their own homes. Uh, and uh, at the beginning and conclusion of the participation, we took measures of emotional competence. You probably know, the, know of this as emotional intelligence. And participants also kept diaries documenting their time with Neo Numina 
And lastly, we interviewed participants at the conclusion of their involvement in the study. Now, what this data told us is, first of all, uh, in looking at the questionnaire data, we found a significant increase in interpersonal emotional regulation. So people found it uh, easier to regulate or change the emotions of, uh, of the people that they were interacting with. Um, and then through the thematic analysis of the qualitative data, uh, we came to three themes. Um, so the first of these themes is spatial temporal actualization. So this theme of spatial temporal actualization concerns how uh, emotion changed or did not change over time and how it's manifested within the participant's world. So the holographic manifestation of emotion helped participants conceive of emotion as a tangible thing, uh, which led them to experiment with different stimuli to better learn how they can regulate theirs and their partner's emotion. Um, so a quote from this is one participant said, I wanted to see if smoking a small joint would change how they reacted. I think it increased my stress levels, which seemed to be reflected in the numinar activity with them being far more active, both in time and space afterwards. I like this one because I point out time and space like specifically, which was very interesting. Um, next is objective representation. So there was a theme of, um, uh, so in experiencing, okay, so uh, it described how participants encoded, decoded the uh, emotional information uh, as representa uh, re representation, allowing for emotion to be expressed as information, either about themselves or their partner. So in expressing emotion as information, it allowed them to take in how they were feeling from a third person perspective. So this was a third person perspective, both from the individual and third person from like the group itself. So emotion was experienced as declarative with uh, participants describing perceptions of the system being a mirror into the mind or some infallible intermediate between individuals. Uh, an example of this is one participant said, uh, they gave uh, an example of them thinking, I think I'm feeling pretty good. Let's put on the neo numinous for a little and see if I'm actually feeling good or if I'm just tricking myself that I'm doing good. And lastly, we have the theme of peer to natural transmission. So this uh, concerned the connections between individuals, the system and their surroundings and their social context and the flow of information between these connections. So through this theme, we came to an understanding that neo numina enabled participants to experience communication of emotion as some form of supernatural ability, which gave them sensory insight and access to information they otherwise could not have. So this went just beyond access, uh, accessing their partner's emotional state, but participants were also reporting the ability to make inferences about things in their context based on their own or their partner's fractals, uh, demonstrating like an emergent sense of extended abilities of perception. Um, so one example of this is uh, one participant said, uh, it enabled me to monitor seemingly uh, drastic changes in their emotion, even the, as they affirmed to me that it was in fact okay for me to keep playing music. So they were playing a guitar, looked at their partner, their partner was like, oh, you know, it's totally fine. But the fractals were betraying that that was actually not the case. And there's another uh, example where um, two participants were playing like a card game and they're saying, uh, this, uh, this other person wearing the HoloLens can see my reaction to the cards uh, that I can only see. So it gave them more information about the card game. So learning from this, we've devised a set of um, design strategies to uh, in implementing these uh, results in your own uh, emotion communication systems uh, if, if for like designers building them in the future. Uh, so like we go extensively into this in the paper. I'm running out of time now, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, and then going beyond Neo Numina, uh, so for my PhD, I'm currently building my framework of integrated consciousness, which this and the previous study that I have conducted has informed. And the next step is to is uh, a system that I'm designing now called Signet, which is looking at um, how we can integrate, um, like in interpersonally integrate consciousness, not through some sort of like symbolic representation like in Neo Numina, but through di direct uh, neural stimulation, through uh, transcranial direct stimulation. Um, and yeah, so hopefully uh, this gets into Kai next year and you'll all be able to see me talk about that then. Um, so, but until then, thank you for listening. And if there's anything I'm hoping you take home after this, it's the notion that through technology, one can access and hopefully uh, one day fully experience the subjective consciousness of another. Uh, thank you.